my lovelies, welcome back to Rouge Power Beauty. I've got that squeaky stool thing going on again. Um, it's April, it, yes, so I have favourites. Um, it's been a funny month, a very up and down month for many reasons. I'm not going to go into, um, just not the best month. May, um, we have our family staying, so my in-laws are coming to stay. Then my sister-in-law and her fiancé are coming to stay, which is going to be lovely. And um, we're all going out for a family meal, which is even better. So that to look forward to. And we've had a mix of weather, good, bad and indifferent. And the good news, did I tell you about the banana plant? Maybe I didn't, but this is a favourite, kind of. Um, the banana plant, quite hardy. I'm very fond of our banana plant and she's done very, very well. She's grown beautifully. And then we suddenly had that horrific cold spell with snow and everything. Now the previous winter, we wrapped her up like she was a precious jewel and she was all snuggled and then the snow came and we just basically didn't and she's looked well dead simple as that for weeks for and I kept saying to Craig let's have a bit of faith in a beryl um, banana plant and Craig's like she's dead what are you going to do with that pot because she's dead let's get it out she's dead and the other day I was sat in the garden with Betty and I suddenly saw one little green shoot coming out of Beryl. And um, now there's about three or four. So my favourite thing is that Beryl the banana plant is alive. And I'm really pleased about it because I felt very guilty that I neglected her. But it just shows what these plants can withstand. All these instructions of, oh, you know, snuggle them up and wrap them in this and do that. And she actually withstood probably the coldest weather I've experienced while I've lived down south. If I'd been in Yorkshire, it would have just been a normal winter's day. But down here, we don't get a lot of snow. And um, people wrap up as though, you know, it's the ice age simple as that but I'm really pleased so Beryl the banana plant is a favorite for I don't really give my plants names by the way just you know seagulls yes plants not generally but Beryl seem to fit the banana plant so anyway Beryl's alive there you go um seagull news Bernard as you know arrived back on his chimney all's good there Gert and Arthur are our new additions who have decided to nest on a flat roof that we have um, which a lot of neighbours don't like um, when seagulls nest on their roofs and they have spikes and everything else and we had the seagull spikes which the seagulls just basically picked off and threw to the ground which I would if I'd lived here before humans did which seagulls you know, we're the ones who built the houses, seagulls belong here. That's how I see it. So Gert and Arthur have decided to nest. There are a lot of seagulls, not necessarily, when I say nesting, they're sort of preparing, but there's a lot of, um, you know, lovey-dovey going on and it's quite vocal and it's often quite visible and quite graphic. That's all I'm saying. If you watch Big Bang Theory, coitus, that's the word. That's all I'm going to say. Right, favourites. This is going to be a waffly video, you can tell, can't you? Right, I'm going to start with my sort of mm, favourite because, sorry for the clacking, um, a few people have bought this already, a few people have been sent this, and a few people are probably thinking about buying it. Totally up to you. I bought this, it wasn't sent to me. It's the Skincare Bible by Dr Anjali Mahato. Mah I apologise, my pronunciation isn't great. Um, it's from Amazon and it's the Skincare Bible. And some of it's, basically, none of it was a surprise. I knew a lot of it. It's interesting if you're wanting to get into skincare, but there are a few things I really just didn't agree with. One of them being her questionable look at oils, facial oils for oily combination skin. That's enough to put me off. And as soon as I read that she didn't think oils were perhaps the thing to use, I lost interest. So, you know, you've got to make your own mind up. Didn't impress me, didn't teach me anything, and just annoyed me about the facial oil thing, the skincare Bible. However, it looks lovely in photographs. Like you needed to know that. If you're a beauty blogger, it's a really good background for photographs. Some of them you'll have seen before, 
but they're obviously favourites. Also background noise, I have got the windows open because it's quite warm today, I'm sorry, but it's too warm to have them shut and Betty gets overheated and all that malarkey, so I'm sorry if you hear cars and traffic. I keep thinking about getting a mic, a separate mic, um, whether that would improve the sound or not, so we'll see. This you've definitely seen before, I featured it last year and it's out again and I love it. It's not the cheapest skin tint, but it really does make a difference to my skin. It's just like your skin, but better, but even better than other skin tints. And it's Sarah Chapman's Skinesis Skin Insurance SPF 30. And it's her perfecting tint. One and a half pumps is what I generally use, but it really does give almost like an airbrushed, very subtle evenness to the skin, but such a beautiful finish. Um, I absolutely love it um, and I would definitely get another one but a huge favourite nice to get it out because we'd had beautiful weather nice if you want to look polished but not too made up so you're going out for lunch but you want to look reasonably presentable really lovely probably one of the best skin tints hourglass is another good one glossier is nice but it's very watery but for me, I think high-end wise, that's the best I've used. Right, these two brushes represent the brand Sigma. And I have featured Sigma before. Um, it's one of the first high-end brand brushes that I sort of started to use, aside from using my East Saint Laurent when I worked for East Saint Laurent. And I had a lot of MAC brushes. Um, but Sigma, I've always loved. Very long lasting, they wash beautifully, but they just work so well. There's something about the weight of them, everything about them I love. Every brush I've had from Sigma I've really loved. Um, this is the Angle Kabuki brush, this is my second one. Um, F84, sometimes they do change the numbers, so check the name of the brush. And this is a fairly new edition, which I love. It's the Concealer Blend Kabuki F79. Um, really nice for placing concealer. I do feel they are more... Um, flexible than the Nanshai. As much as I like Nanshai, I think Sigma is slightly better. But I love this and it's really nice as well if you want to use cream products. I have quite a few Sigma brushes but I've been getting them out more and I've also been adding a little bit more because some of my brushes have started to look a bit tired. Um, tatty and tired. So I've gone for Sigma because you do get your money's worth and I love them. Right, my next is a concealer which is everywhere and I spotted this in my local Superdrug. There weren't many, it's obviously very popular and the shades, that's the problem. It's Makeup Revolution and it's their Conceal and Define Liquid Concealer. Um, I got shade C9 which actually turns out to be perfect. It's a pinky tone um, one of these that has a massive doe for applicator. Do you remember Charlotte Tilbury's Flawless Filter? That has a huge doe for applicator. I do like them. That's the colour, so it's a pinky tone. Quite a thick consistency and that worried me initially when I tried it in Superdrug, but it really is exceptionally good. I think it's about 4 99 You could use it as a foundation if you wanted to and you could blend that down using a skin tint but a really effective concealer that works um i mean it says define i just use it to conceal it's it's not lightweight but it is very subtle you only need a small amount doesn't sit in the fine lines it does reflect the light but it also gives a natural finish which i like i don't like the eye to be completely blanked out as you know but certainly worth 4 99 of your money and if you can find your shade brilliant i would recommend if you're in a super drugstore is to properly go through the stand because i saw a lot of different numbers mingled in together so don't think they don't have it if it's not in that set tray do have a look because people are very untidy but massive favorite this month and great value as well what's next right these i've mentioned these in a blog post You'll know I started to get a little bit addicted to Smashbox and their matte lip finishes and I've really got into matte lips and I do tend to find that high end perform better for me than high street. A lot of the high street ones either take ages to mattify or when they do they're very drying and you feel that they are just sucking the life out of your lips. Also one or two of them have the most revolting scent. 
not attractive at all. So Smashbox, I loved. Then I saw, um, I think it was something on Instagram about the Lancome shakers and they do matte shakers. Now I got two shades. I got Kiss Me Shelly, you know, I can't say it other than that. And then I got Red in Five. So the Red in Five is your standard sort of orangey red, thinking summer. And then the one that I didn't think looked that interesting is actually a pinky red and I'm addicted to it, the Kiss Me Shelly, which I love. So they're more subtle than the Smashbox. They are more watery and you can build them up, but they do dry to a lovely matte finish without it being dry or caked. The pigment's nice, it's fairly long lasting. You will find it sort of dries out and wears out quicker on the middle of the lip. You can reapply. The only thing I don't like is the applicator. I just don't think it's fine enough to apply the lip colour. It's okay when you're doing the larger part of your lips, but when you want to be more precise, I'm getting better at it, but I'd like the top to be slightly longer to make it easier to use, and maybe that to be a little bit more coned, tapered to the end, if that makes sense. But I absolutely adore the Kiss Me Shelly. I don't really wear the red in five that often. It's nice, but it's too orangey. But this, I would repurchase it because I love the colour. And if you want a more subtle matte finish, it's worth thinking about these, where the Smashbox, what you see is what you get, and it's full on. No, this, this is Giorgio Armani. I love the Luminous Silk Foundation, which I replaced. I got this last year, and then I didn't really use it that often because I felt it was too yellow. However, I've been using it more as a primer and mixing it with other foundations, and it really makes such a beautiful finish on the skin. It's Giorgio Armani Maestro Glow, Nourishing Fusion Makeup, and I have shade four. Um, it's a pipette foundation, very, very glowy. Do shake it aggressively before use, and it just makes the skin absolutely silky, glowy, dewy, everything you possibly want. I may try and get a lighter shade. It does have an SPF of 30. I may try and get a lighter shade because I do love the consistency. It's just the colour I struggle with mascaras i think i've mentioned this one before but i love it and i was wearing it the other day and a friend just said what on earth have you got on your lashes and it's perversion it's urban decay's perversion mascara bigger blacker badder i have the travel size and i actually prefer the travel size to the full size i just think you get more product on the wand and i just think it works better on the lashes and i love it it's my absolute favorite and i have got a spare because it's just great it also stays in place if i have hay fever sneezes or i cry because i love to cry because i'm so emotional it really does hold its own and it's not waterproof so huge favorite and then a new one they've just brought out the waterproof and i'm not a waterproof mascara girl really but this is lancome and it's the miss you big and it's just a proper good old-fashioned wand of mascara and I absolutely love it really good worth the hype there's been a lot of hype about this for a long time um but I yes very impressed with it luxurious creamy you don't need to pre-curl your lashes it kind of does it as you apply it two massive massive mascara favorites this month Talking of lashes, and my friend saying, goodness me, your lashes look incredible, and I did have the Perversion Mascara on. I do have long lashes at the top, and I always have had. However, I have been using V Beauty London's Lash and Brow Serum, and I've read so many things about this. There's argan oil and all sorts of beautiful things. Comes with the mascara wand, and you apply it at night. It's the last thing I put on my lashes at night. After probably three, four days, I could tell my bottom lashes had grown because they've never been massively long, but definitely there's more to play with with the mascara. And it certainly started to work on the top. And my friend was just like, gosh, your lashes actually touch your brow. A lot of them do and have always done, but the condition has improved greatly. And I've tried other lash treatments. Revita Lash improved my lashes. But Revita Lash is over £100 of product, which to me is just ridiculous. So if you want to read upon V Beauty London's website, the reviews she's had, 
A lot of bloggers I know rave about this stuff. All I can say is the condition and the length of my lashes has definitely improved. And you just pop it on, as I say, from root to tip, top and bottom, wasp in a jam jar moped, uh, top to bottom, so from your root to your lash ends and really load them up and the same with your bottom, beautifully conditioning. Um, I do wear glasses, I do wear contact lenses, I have not had an issue with this at all. Obviously if you did stop using it straight away, I haven't used a lot there but I've been applying it every night so a little goes a long way. So lashes, great product. And another old favourite because I can't remember which video I spoke about. Um, I overdid it with my exfoliant. I've over exfoliated my skin and I have damaged it. My own fault, I know what I've done. Um, I've also used retinol and exfoliant and it's just been too much. And here, you can't see it because I've put lots of slap on today. But here I have some sort of broken red patch and I have the most lovely thing growing on my face there that's like a big red mountain and red round it and it's not been great. So I have fallen back to something that for me, when all else fails and there's so much out there, but this for me is just something that always, always, always is in my skincare stash. It's Clarins and it's their Skin Repair Concentrate. It's the SOS treatment for sensitive skin. It's only a 15 mil product. You just use it topically or you can use it over the whole face, but this really helps calm and repair my skin. So a huge favorite, an old favorite, and I always have a spare, you know me. This is a favorite. I don't really want to, I'm not going to unpackage it for you because it's so messy. However, I have written a blog post about this. It's a brand from Australia, they do ship internationally and it's Carbon Cocoa and they do charcoal products for mouth, teeth, gums and they sent me the Carbon Cocoa Natural Teeth Whitening Original Pot of Charcoal Powder. They sent me the Activated Charcoal Toothpaste and they sent me their Bamboo Bristle Manual Brush. Now then, what you do is you wet your brush, you dip it into the powder, you brush for two minutes, you rinse, then you apply your toothpaste, brush for two minutes, rinse. So, first things first, it's messy. This is a black charcoal powder, it's finely milled. It is very, very messy. You spit it out, it looks like a horror movie. So, I fill my sink up, put my head as near to the water as I can and spit it out that way. To, make sure there isn't as much black around the sink, on the walls, on the floor. And the same with the toothpaste. Now, I was a little worried at first whether it'd be too abrasive, um, whether a manual brush would be sufficient because I use an electric toothbrush. I floss, I use into dental brushes. And those of you that have been followers for a long time will know I have a lot of dental issues. I have a lot of gum issues teeth issues, I've had abscesses, I get my jawbone cleaned, quadrant by quadrant, I have a lot of problems. And it doesn't matter how rigorous I am with my cleaning, the plaque build up on my teeth is a problem. Generally, every dental visit I have a clean and it takes her a few minutes to get rid of everything. It's just part of my gum teeth behavior. So, I started doing this. And after the first night, I actually liked the look, the feel. I didn't want to try this to get my teeth whiter. I just wanted to try it to see how it would improve or maybe not improve my gum health. So I was interested in that respect. And I actually did feel my mouth was cleaner. I felt my gums were cleaner. There was just a general better feeling in my mouth. And I also felt that there wasn't as much plaque so I've been using it for three, maybe four weeks. And you know I broke a tooth, partly. So I went to the dentist for a checkup and to have my tooth fixed. And I was telling her about what I'd been doing and said, you know, would you have a look, see what you think? So she fixed my tooth, da da da, had a look in my mouth and said that it was the best my gums and teeth and plaque had been in the four years I'd been a patient. And she said, look, I'll clean your teeth 
but it took her seconds because there was barely any plaque. She said my gums looked very healthy, there certainly wasn't the plaque build up, my enamel looked healthy, my teeth were clean and my gum health. And also I have a lot of problems because my gums sometimes there are issues, I do get bad breath sorry i know it's not a nice topic but actually this has really improved the hygiene um of my sort of mouth generally it's just felt cleaner i haven't had the bad breath my gums have certainly been healthier i haven't found it too abrasive and it has been well impressive my dentist felt so certainly felt that it had improved across the board everything um so i've been really really happy with this i have written a more in-depth blog post do check out my blog but carbon cocoa i don't know about other charcoal toothpaste and products these are from australia and they do ship internationally you can buy more now in places like superdrug and boots so it might be worth looking at if like myself you have a lot of problems i would recommend you speak to your dentist because they know your mouth better than you do almost um so it's certainly worth talking to them but i have been super super impressed so other favorites i've written them down how organized am i we always like to do our netflix we discovered no we didn't discover lost in space was a tv series in the 60s and craig loves it and then netflix did it and we watched that and i really enjoyed it um I'm sad it's over, we've got to wait for the next season. I love Toby Stevens, very attractive. Dr Smith, Dr Smith irritated the hell out of me and I really wanted her to get a comeuppance. I'm not going to say any more than that. Um, but loved it. And we've just finished watching The Alienist, which was very disturbing and upsetting. But Luke Evans was very, very good. Dakota Fanning was very, very good. Um, very, yeah, just very dark. But we've watched that and I presume there'll be another series because it's based on the books of Cal Caleb Carr and I think he's written three. But we kind of enjoyed it, but it's one of those where you're not sure whether you can enjoy it. So Alienist, Lost in Space we've done and we're just looking for another series. So thank you for your recommendations as well. Keep them coming. Right, I um, told you about the book. Also on Netflix, we watched um, a fabulous film. It's a bit quirky, don't know how old it is. It's called My Old Lady, and it's got Maggie Smith in, who is magnificent. And I think it's Kevin Klein. I'm sure it is. It's a very quirky film, and I love quirky. And it's set in France. I'm not going to tell you anymore, but it's worth, it's kind of a Sunday afternoon, scones, tea just a chilled afternoon film i loved it and also my favorite one of my favorite films and i've been looking for it on netflix for since we've had netflix and putting it in and nothing came up and then the other day craig said oh do you like this film and it was howard's end which is anthony hopkins and emma thompson and it's one of my favorite books and it is one of my favorite films it's so sad but it's so beautiful and it just it's romantic oh it's just everything and i the performance is beautiful and i think vanessa redgrave gives one of her best best performances ever she's such an exquisite statuesque lady um and craig's actually met her um in person and said that she really is just the most loveliest he was in awe of her but it's a beautiful film and i watched that and absolutely absorbed it and i will watch it again and again and again so those are my favorites and there we are april into may into may scary thank you for joining me sorry about the gabbling you know what happens sometimes i just have a lot to say and no rants really today how about that and betty is obviously sniffing in the background right i shall leave it there thank you for joining me my april no spend must just tell you i failed simple as that i'll be honest failed miserably a i cancelled my beauty pie subscription because i get bored i felt obliged to buy things when i didn't really need anything because i was paying 10 pounds a month you pay 10 pound a month to keep you as part of the scheme and then you buy your products on top at discount price but i was getting a little bit i don't need anything but i don't want to be paying 10 pound a month and then not 
getting something. So I've cancelled my subscription. Also, it just seems to be everywhere and I do get very bored when I see stuff everywhere and everyone's got it and it's just... There's so much more out there I want to try. So I cancelled my subscription, which meant that I just had to spend what I had left over in my account. So that broke my spending ban. Um, I also got another bottle of my Clarins SOS because this is empty. I've got my other one and I've got my spare. Um, I also bought a few other bits and pieces, so I failed miserably. May, we'll try again in May. Fingers crossed. Thank you again for joining me and I will see you soon in another video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.